the third thing I want to refer to relates to the future of the headship of the Commonwealth of Nations. That came about in a very curious way. Uh, and it came about in 1948-49. And it came about under urgent circumstances because Ireland passed a Republic of Ireland Act through the Irish Parliament and it awaited proclamation to begin. Uh, and uh, at the same time, India uh, had announced that it wished to change its status from a constitutional monarchy, which it was after its independence in 1947, uh, to a republic. Ireland, before the meeting of the Commonwealth Prime Ministers, early in 1949, hastened through the proclamation of the Irish Republic. India wanted to discuss it at the meeting of the Prime Ministers. Ireland did not send its Prime Minister to the meeting of the Prime Ministers. Ireland regarded itself as out of the Commonwealth of Nations because up till that time, allegiance to the Crown was the glue that linked all the countries of the Commonwealth of Nations. India sent Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, and India was more temperate and more keen to find some formula. Nehru, never forget, was a lawyer, and he and Attlee sat down to try to find a formula, and they found a formula, and the formula was acceptance, as it is said in the London Declaration of 1949, acceptance of the King as the head of the Commonwealth. A symbolic position, uh, a position without any power, uh, a position simply uh, that would accept the King as the head of the Commonwealth, allowing India to remain in the Commonwealth whilst becoming a republic. And that, of course, has been the formula that's been followed ever since then. A number, 17 of the countries of the 54 member country Commonwealth uh, have remained constitutional monarchies, but the rest, the majority, have become republics, but accept the king, now the queen, as the head of the Commonwealth. When King George VI died in February 1952, Jawaharlal Nehru immediately contacted the Queen and said, uh, I hope that Your Majesty will accept the position of the head of the Commonwealth. And the Queen graciously, but after getting the advice of the British Government, agreed to do so. Uh, and so she has fulfilled that role. She has regarded it, obviously, as a very important part of her functions. Uh, and um, she has fulfilled the role with great skill during all those years. But the question will be posed on the demise of the Crown as to whether the King or the King's successor is a reference to an office or is a reference to the king for the time being. In favour of the latter view is the fact that a step had to be taken and Nehru took that step. Um, and at that time there were no other republics in 1952. Uh, against that view is that the generic word the king was used but the realities are that politicians will decide this matter. When it happens, a decision will have to be made very quickly. And the decision would be made by the heads of government of the Commonwealth, who are the, the people who make up Chogham, which is the governing body of the Commonwealth. I say it would have to be made quickly because in the royal style and title of the Queen at the moment is 
the style head of the Commons. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, Australia and her other realms and territories, Queen, defender of the faith, head of the Commons. And so that proclamation, which would normally be made from the four palaces in London, ending with the Palace of St James, would have to be made within days of the death of the monarch. And it therefore presents a tricky question. I was appointed to the eminent persons group uh, by the Secretary General of the Commonwealth to advise on the future of the Commonwealth. And we received a number of uh, proposals uh, from various interests around the Commonwealth saying we should address the question of who will be the head of the Commonwealth, if anybody, after the death of the present head of the Commonwealth. Uh, ultimately, the 10 members of the eminent persons group decided that we hadn't been specifically asked to advise on that matter, that it was a highly political matter, that it didn't immediately present itself for decision, that it was a decision being political that should be made by the politicians at the time it has to be made. Um, we had in the back of our minds that the Queen's mother uh, lived to 101 and uh, that in the coron anthem, coronation anthem they say, may the Queen live forever. <laughs> so uh, we didn't touch the matter and I think we were wise not to do so. And I'm not going to say now what should be done. But it is an issue which will have to be addressed. It, there are, of course, very great advantages of keeping the uh, royal connection. Uh, apart from everything else, the Commonwealth heads of government seem to love going to a royal occasion. Uh, Republican or monarchists, uh, it is something that they all want to do. And some of the most horrible heads of the Commonwealth people who have really been oppressors and tyrants have always been there at every function where the Queen is there. And if you had an alternative arrangement, such as sharing it around to the Commonwealth heads of government, well, you'd have to face the possibility of having uh, a head of government who isn't really, shall we say, as acceptable as the monarch is. Apart from everything else, the Queen has uh, given one of the royal palaces, Marlborough House in England, for the use by the Commonwealth Secretariat as its headquarters, and it wouldn't necessarily, one would imagine, continue if uh, the, the monarch is not the head of the Commonwealth. So that um, there are these practical uh, and uh, theoretical problems, but happily they're not immediately around the corner and I hope they won't be for a long time, but they will ultimately have to be addressed. Uh, and uh, I think amongst the many things that the Queen has done uh, so well has been her headship of the Commonwealth. And I was there at Chalkham because that's when we had to present our report. And I was there on the day of the huge barbecue, uh, an inspired idea by the Premier of Western Australia to have the huge barbecue down there uh, in Perth. Uh, and it was a wonderful sight to see all those people, uh, Australian citizens, rushing down there to get a free barbecue. <laughs> as, we went, as we were taken towards the uh, ceremony, the Queen was present, um, a number of the members of the eminent persons group turned to me and said, are these the people of Australia who are so anxious to replace the Queen as the head of a state. And I said, yes, they're all rushing down there to see the Queen and to get a sausage, <laughs> <laughs> which is a very typical Australian situation.